Hey everybody, Jake here, and today I'd like to discuss paying for the intangible. Now what do I mean by that? So when you buy something, you know up front you're paying for manufacturing, you're paying for the materials, you're paying for build quality, things like that, but you're also paying for stuff that you don't see, and sometimes stuff that you don't even feel. So as a quick example, okay, this here, this is a millet torrent. It is a semi-custom knife. It's very expensive. Now, what are you paying for on something like this versus something like this? Well, um, you're paying for handle material to a degree. You're paying for the milling. You can see all the tiny lines and things on there that they've milled into the handle scales. A lot of com complexity and things like that. A lot of thought and design went into this. Probably a little more, more than the uh, ZT here. But both of these are made in America. You're also paying for that, by the way, <laughs> which I'm sure you know by now. But the exclusivity and limitedness of this knife, there's there's probably more than one out there exactly like this, but this is mine. I picked out everything you know about it, pretty much. You're paying for that. Okay. Let's go over to Pelican here. So this is Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl. You're paying for this material. You're paying for that silver trim. You're paying for that gold nib. But you're also paying for the Pelican name. Now, Pelican's not as prestigious as, say, Mont Blanc or something like that. But the name carries a certain weight. People know their pens are expensive, and they know they're well-built, and things like that. And when you have a reputation, you can charge more. When there is a lot of want for your product, you can charge more, and you know people will buy it. Now, me personally, I didn't pay for this because of the name. I couldn't care less what name was on this pen, but it is gorgeous, and that's why I bought it. And it's a limited edition, so they can charge more. Little things like that. This Baron Fig Spectre here. So this is part of the Squire line. This one's a little different. So it did cost a little bit more than the others when it came out, than their other you know, Baron Fig Squires, but I paid about $20 more than the retail for this. Why? because of the limited edition aspect of it. Uh, they didn't make a ton of these, they don't make them anymore, and I wanted this little ghost thing on my pen, so I paid for that. And you always pay for this stuff. Okay, let's take a look at some other examples. So let's bring back out this ZT here. And let's bring out this. This is the real steel Megamorph. Metamorph. Sorry, not Megamorph. So what are you paying for here? Well, materials, you know, to, to a pretty substantial degree, you have titanium on this side on this one, and you have carbon fiber on this end. On this one, the handle's aluminum. You're paying for a better steel on ZT. This is, you know, uh, not terrible steel. It's, uh, I believe it's, yeah, 14C28N, which isn't terrible, not great. This one, you have S35VN. But why is it $100 more for this? Well, it's made in America, which we've discussed. This knife is made in China, saving some money there, but also the warranty. ZT has a fantastic warranty. They'll sharpen your knife for free. They'll send you out replacement parts, all that stuff. They're here in America. Real Steel, it's gonna be a bit more difficult for you to get this knife warrantied. You pay for that. You pay for the people to warranty your knives. You pay for the location, you pay for limited edition stuff, you pay for all that. Now, when you buy things, you may know ahead of time, hey, I'm paying for, for this. You may not know what you're paying for. My advice is to try to be aware of why it costs so much. That way you can prevent getting completely ripped off. Okay, these pens cost about the same. This pen is made out of Macrolon. It's gorgeous. I love this pen. It's a piston filler, which is, you know, a decent amount of engineering, and it has a gold nib on it. It's very well built. It's fantastic. I love this pen. I also like this pen. This is a Curious Customs uh, deck graph. But, differences here. This is made in America. This one's made in Germany. This is not mass produced. This one is. This one is limited edition. This one's not. So, 
all those are intangible things. But what are the tangible things that you're losing by buying this pin here? Well, this pen only has a titanium nib with it. To buy a gold nib, that'd be $100 more than this pen. It is a cartridge converter. It's not a piston filler. So some people may prefer that. I personally prefer piston fillers because I love them. But that, that stuff, this is, you know, machined in Arizona out of, you know, billets of aluminum. You pay for that. You pay for all of those things that you don't see and that you don't hear and that sometimes you can't even feel. You know, most people probably couldn't tell the difference between cast aluminum and milled aluminum. After a while, you, you can certainly tell, but if you handed this to someone on the street and said, hey, was this milled out of a solid block of aluminum or was it, you know, cast aluminum or bent aluminum, they probably wouldn't know. And those things are honestly a decent chunk of what you pay for and it's up to you to decide that to say hey is this pin four hundred dollars ish maybe 350 is this worth 350 dollars more than this they're both produced in germany they both have fantastic reputations as a company they both have gold nibs they're both piston fillers so what's the extra 350 dollars for as explained, it's for the materials, it's for the silver trim, it's for the name, a big chunk of it. So it's up to you to decide, hey, do I want to pay extra for these intangible things? Do I want to pay more just to get a reputation or good support or exclusivity or you know country of origin, if that matters to you? I personally don't care, but for some people it does. So then you have to ask yourself, you know, why would I pay $150 for an Edison with a steel nib when I can get a Janelle with a steel nib for $5? I mean, apart from build quality and obvious things like that, it's, it's up to you. It all comes down to you. Do you like, you know, slightly better fit and finish? Do you appreciate the rarity of the materials used? Do you appreciate the designs, the little touches of things that they've put onto these, you know, pens or knives or whatever? Anything that's not severely mass produced is going to come out better than stuff that is. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth it for me to pay more? Um, perfect example. So the Pilot of Roshizuku inks. They've dropped down by about ten or fifteen dollars a bottle. Why? Because they figured out a way to mass produce the bottles. They finally met the quantity they needed to where they can mass produce these glass bottles instead of making them by hand. Do you notice any difference? Probably not. But they certainly did. They had to pay for that handmade glass bottle every single time, and it costs a lot of money. So most people were probably like, "Oh, they're finally dropping the price. Maybe they realized how these were too expensive." No. They cut costs on their end. And it's those little things that you don't see that add up. And they add up quickly. Especially if you go to buy quote-unquote luxury stuff. Like, oh, God forbid, a Michael Kors watch. It's probably going to be quartz. And you could probably get an automatic for, you know, about the same price that's pretty decent. Or a far superior quartz watch from a different brand like Casio or something like that. So, some to some people, that doesn't matter. They want that name. And I, I understand that. I, I'm not one of those people, but if you are, you know, enjoy it. If you're, if you're buying a pelican because of that little bird and that pelican clip, you go buy all the pelicans you want. Personally, I use my Lamy just as much as I use my pelican. I love them both. But can I completely see $350 here? I can see it. I can tell you where it comes from, but I don't think it's worth the upcharge necessarily. Which is why I had a hard time recommending this pen to anyone. But just keep in mind when you're going out and you're buying things, before you go, oh gosh, that's way too much money. Let me, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get this. I'm going to get this. Because this is by a magnitude cheaper. This is like $25 and this is 500 Why would I pay... 2,000 times, 
that's a horrible. That's not two thousand times more. Why would I pay twenty times more for, you know, this versus this? They're they're both knives. They both work. Why why are you paying more? You're paying for the handwork. You're paying for the warranty. You're paying for the country of origin. You're paying for the details, the little things. You're paying for the exclusivity, the rarity, the customization. You're paying for all of that. And materials, you know, things you can certainly feel and see. But it's up to you to decide if that's worth it. You know, I know a lot of people that are like, you know, oh, that Pelican pen's gorgeous. You know, how much was it? I tell them that, nope. Just quick, quick, nope. I could buy blah, blah, blah with that. Those people proceed to go buy whatever else they want. If you like that Pelican, you're going to get that Pelican. If you're looking at these and you're like, nope, that's off the table. Every time that person's going to get this knife. Um, I, I don't make these videos to try to persuade y'all to buy the more expensive option. But the reason I made this video is kind of just to say, buy what's right for you. Don't get pressured into buying a Mont Blanc or something like that because someone else likes that Mont Blanc name. If you like the Mont Blanc name or you like that pin in particular, go buy it. If you don't, don't buy it. Because with these luxury brands and things like that, a lot more often than not, you're paying for that name, you're paying for that logo, things like that. Or if you know you want to get a knife to last you your whole life or a pen, don't buy a Chinese knife or pen. They're, in general, going to be harder to warranty. And it's just, you know, if unless you live in China. If you live, you know, I have views from a bunch of different countries. If you live in China, by all freaking means, go out and buy whatever you want. Don't buy an American knife in that situation because, you know, if it comes down to it and you're like, hey, I'm in China and I want either this or or this here because they're around the same price. Um, in general, I'm probably going to recommend the Centifante 3 more. But if you're like, well, my main concern is the warranty. I want this to last my entire life. Get this one because you can get it warranted a lot more easy than sending this one to America and paying for the shipping. So it all depends on where you're from. So don't necessarily buy American made. Uh, that doesn't really matter unless it matters to you. Buy something that's convenient and easy to take care of for yourself, unless you don't care. Personally, I knew going into this Pelican that, hey, if I get this warrantied, it's gotta go, well, you know, Pelican distributor in America maybe, but potentially back to Germany. That's fine, that's kind of you know, that that's cool. It's just those little things that you you may not think of when you go to get it, but they can even add cost later on. Or they can affect resale value. You know, if you go to resell this Kara's Customs, I'm probably not going to get what I paid for it. Maybe, if the demand for this particular model goes up really high, but if not, it's a Kara's Customs pin. You'll, you may, I'll, I'll get maybe half. Um, Lamy 2000, gonna take a pretty big hit on it. The Pelican, you're gonna take a massive freaking hit on this. This, this is, you can pick these up for like 350 bucks. That's ridiculous. Some people care about that, some people don't. The luxury brands tend to take a larger dip down. This, I could probably go out and get what I paid for it right this moment. It's little stuff like that. So if resale value matters to you, take all of that intangibility into account when you're buying this make a list if you have to go okay why is this 10 times more expensive than this write out a list you know check the resale value on both if you're might resell it check all of those things because when you get the product and you're using it over your lifetime that stuff will come up you may have to warranty your your pelican you may have to ship it out to germany maybe you didn't want to do that maybe you want to buy here in america you know maybe you wanted to get a Keras custom spin or an Edison or Franklin Kristoff or something like that. There are a ton of pen manufacturers here in America. Take all of that into account when you're buying this stuff. That way you don't regret it. Now, don't let that stop you from buying stuff that's inconvenient or expensive, like a Pelican. <laughs> um, don't let that prevent you from buying those things. Just keep in mind when you're purchasing them, this is what's going to have to happen. So that was just a bit of a a rant. I had been looking at a few things on my desk and thinking, you know, wow, this is <laughs> some of this stuff that you, that I know I got charged for is just 
some of it's you know I can I can tell when I'm carrying it build quality materials country of origin to a degree things like that mass produced or versus handmade or you know custom things like that it's just all of that comes into play at least for me maybe it doesn't matter to you in that case you probably haven't watched this far but if it does just keep all that in mind um, thanks for tuning in listening to me ramble for like 15 16 minutes and i hope you have a good day don't forget to check out all my other videos i'll try to keep some coming out this week um all these have been recorded ahead of times but I'll, I'll try to keep it up while i'm gone all right thanks guys bye